Welcome back to the Dork Table. With Flash a Rooney Dork. And Graham Z as my co host, which is on this Saturday, the 18th of January, 2020. You're welcome. January. Yeah, I know. It's one of those words. It's like, you can't say it wrong. You can't say it right. You can just say it. Just say it, because it's fun. <sighs> Oh, Whoa. I'm telling you, <laughs> your your little Mexican guy voice is getting better as you practice it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Grimner, we had a meltdown, Maybe. got through it without your assistance for the first time in a year, <laughs> and uh, we made it to RLM, you lucky people. Yeah. You want to say That's hello? We're like overachievers and stuff. You well, know? you're an overachiever. I'm. I'm. I'm no. <laughs> you're. You're just a flash achiever. I'm a f- <laughs> something. I don't know. I don't. I don't really give anything my. Full, you know, I have, I have a fear of overachieving, so I try not to overwork. Fear of overachieving. I'm sure there's some kind of scientific term for that. But no, that's just Jewish bullshit to keep you distracted while I take all your money. Oh, because you're, you're, you're a Jewy bastard. You'll learn. Anyway, you want to say the highs and the hellos to the bots and the bodies? Hi to the bots and bodies. I get to do that. Some of some they had to wait for us. We we're late because I did a major f up. Again. We're late. We're late for very important things. <laughs> no time to say hello, goodbye. We're late. We're late. We're late. I know. So, I... Hey there, barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole uh... wide world. Right up top. He's always telling us where to go and what to do. And, uh... and we don't seem to mind too awful much because we keep coming back. <laughs> yeah. I also see Bill Beetle! <laughs> and Grimner, who had balls to the floor or balls yeah, to the wall. He had, balls to the wall. He had issues with the nether regions last night. Uh, but he survived We'll just leave it. it at that. And he played some really good music. So, well, go. obviously, when you have issues with the nether regions, you do play really good music, or you mm-hmm. sing opera. Ah, the yeah, with those kind of choices. <laughs> <laughs> Moose girl, who's off vacationing at some rendezvous. Moosey's off a... vacation. Moosey. Yeah, yeah. She actually has a life. Shame uh, on her. Apparently. I know. The lovely Miss Kate is Miss also Kate. here, as well as Anti. And the Asmodeus Asmo Asmo. is also here. We got some Chalcedonia in the chat. And Echelon. Echelon. Yours truly is here, as well as Java 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 Java, 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 Doctor 2. And was it Java's birthday yesterday? I have no idea. He didn't say anything. Yesterday or the day before yesterday or so. I saw a notification on Facebook. I didn't notice it on RLM, so I don't do Facebook. Hmm. No. I'm well, the only RLMer that has completely severed ties with all those big no, groups. No, Miss Kate did too. Uh, she's not on and, Twitter. Huh, huh, oh, huh. and Cowboy Tech mm. severed Facebook as well. Yay, Cowboy Tech and Facebook. And I don't, I don't remember who else. In any case, neither do I. Jay Dredd is here. Hi, Hansel. And Meister Brower. Hey, Woody. How's your donkey doing, Oh, uh, the dog's oh. ear is not doing well, and he's sending him back to the vet. Mm, poor yeah. puppy. Yeah, I know. Well, the dog won't let him near the ear because the dog's in, you know, discomfort. So they don't, they get defensive and bite when you try to help them. Because mm. <sighs> they just and feel you know, pain, you know? Yeah, well, hydrogen peroxide sometimes will tend to that. But Getting the dog, to the dog is the problem. He's a big mm. dog. Did you see the picture that um, Woody posted the stash? That dog's as big as I am, crying out loud. Probably outweighs me by five pounds. No, that's I'm kidding. I, I'm 135, but that's a pretty good size pit. So, ah. Yeah, you got to. Dogs, when they're in pain, too, they're weird. They're, you know, yes. They deal with pain differently than we do. A lot of people. Well, don't you know, when I'm in pain that. and someone starts poking the mm. part that hurts, mm. I have a tendency to bite. Oh, I ain't gonna Just say. Saying. it. I'm not gonna say it. I have not had all my shots. Poopster so and Prince. <laughs> oh, hey, see, see how you are. You just keep going. And Rome's 
when in Rome, do <laughs> do don't Rome. don't go there. Don't go, don't there. go to Rome. No, no. no. Vanna White is also here. Hey, Vanna. Go to Vanna, and, not to Rome. And we got a Vinny. 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 Yeah. Vanna. And yeah. then we got a Weather Dork. Oh, and Vinny's between so Vanna and Weather Dork. Is he trying to work Sandwich out and negotiate his way some in. kind of? Yeah. I don't want to know. Yeah, he's becoming a Republican right before our eyes. Oh, my goodness. We mm. also got a Phantom. The Phantom. Phantom. Help, help. It's a Phantom. Eat Gad and Gadzooks. And C- I also C- see CC66 C- 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 and yeah. Chascura. Cycles. Hey, honey. Cycles is here. Oh, she's maintaining and the we cat. got a cyborg noodle. May you be cyborg. touched by that cyborgian noodliness. Noodle. Mm. Damn Van Meter. Mm. Damn. Van damn, Van damn. Die yum, Van you. Meter. That's what you need to do. Woman's got a wicked tongue on her, too. I'm telling you. Typing fingers, anyway. I know she does. And I'm saying, she if you does. can type it, you can say it. Poor hands. Ooh, my. We got the dork cakes here, too. <gasps> dork well cakes! Iman. Iman. Um, and Siv. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, Siv. Civiliz- I, civilization I, as we I, know it. I have read N. Siv's text, Miss Mary. It is quite frightening. Take take shelter. Help, help. Take shelter. He's going to take. The end of civilization? Probably. I would. You know expect. what? Whenever they ization something, be afraid. Be very I afraid. I hate to break this to you guys, but civilization died a long time ago. You just guys haven't noticed yet. Because you're uh, no. still in the uh, in the wave of the, uh, you know, thing. No, civilization no. No. is still here and doing just fine. It's alive and kicking and doing exactly what it was designed to do. Oh. Civility Ooh. got kicked out of it a Ow. long time ago. You buzz killer, you. Okay. Never I mind. Frumpy work! No, ah, there's you there. I see oh. you. I see that there's somebody I'm in there. I'm incognito today. And then Frumpy Wike. Hmm? And then Gromit. Gromit! Uh, Gromit. Is that like the little eye hole eyelet thingy on a tennis shoe? I have no idea. Um, JJ. (laughs) Hey, you kilt wearing son of a bitch. How'd you know I was going to say that? Because you say it every time. I could not talk to you for a year. And when you get to Jay's nine stays, you always go up his kilt and start dangling his stuff. Well, I'm just trying to keep his bits from falling off. I'm trying to save your marriage. (laughs) No. That was a funny joke. I'm a funny guy. And now we have Kiss. <laughs> Kiss! Oh, my. Oh, my. Why does that follow after after JJ's I don't want to know. I, I don't want to know <laughs> Coincidence? <either. laughs> uh, perhaps the English language isn't as random as we think. Perhaps anyway, not. Continue. I also think Papa Papa Pon Son. Sock Puppet. Salt Lake City Mike. Slim, Hi, slim, Mike. slim, slim, Jim, slim, slim, Jim, slim. Slim, Jim, slim. I can't say that now, just what once. What is slim, Jim, slim? Because I know what slim Jims are. <laughs> I don't even want. Slim, no. Slim that that I, part you have to chew through to get to the slim Jim. I don't even want to. Find Inquiring it. minds. No. Like no. Oh, you don't want to know? Okay. It's, well, we got a Smataz here, as well as the holiest Roger yeah. ever. Yeah. yeah. And Zeknix. Yeah, he's uh. Poopster's new radio partner. There's three of them, but I, I had a moment with Zpix today when he was signing off this morning when I was coming on. Oh, yeah. sweet. Well, I will uh, have to give it a listen when they say, I keep, you know, I go, I have BitChute uh-huh. um, yeah. as one of my always open tabs, yeah. and I've been catching up with Grimmy's Leftovers. Oh. And so I haven't been listening to anything else. But once I wow. once I'm caught up with Grimmy's leftovers, you know I'm I'm reheating the leftovers. <laughs> Do you know where you are in his leftover? Uh, he numbered them all. He's more organized yeah. than the CIA. I know he is. Yeah. But as soon as I get caught up with them, then I'll start on on Poopster and Prince. Uh. And, well, not Poopster and Prince. No, no, anymore. no. But Prince and yeah. and Z picks yeah. and. Well, yeah, like us, is. just to call it the power hour, because the dork tables okay, had the power many hour. people join me here. I have <sighs> the power! No, Poopster and Prince have the power. But Poopster oh, they just dump say the they power. Do. Oh, they do? Okay, never mind. So, well, and you know how that works. No, I, mean, I it's don't. Like, I, got, I actually got into a little bit of a verbal tete-a-tete. Mm-hmm. 
um, on YouTube in the comment section mm-hmm. on the video. What? And um, and it was with you know it, we were discussing you know like well we weren't really discussing. <laughs> I put out my perspective and they let me know that I need to read, and I let them know that I read and have a nice day. So mm-hmm. that in any case, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. you know it was discussing how the devil or Satan. Mm-hmm is the god of this world and <laughs> owns this world and i was like no uh what part of of course i didn't say this in the mm-hmm. chit chat but you know just just to put this out there what part of the father of lies do people not get <laughs> well if you, you know, believe when they, it when they say yeah. well satan rules the world because satan offered it to jesus and satan was going to do this and what part of the father of lies are you not getting you know that's that's what always pops into my head because wow. I'm one of those people that the Bible is an interesting read. Yes, it is. It's very interesting, no less interesting than a lot of other books that I've read, including lots and lots and lots of fiction that admitted it was fiction. Mm. How about I just leave that right there? <laughs> I don't know. You started it. Don't ask me. But, you know, to me, it's like, okay, it's a, it really is an interesting read. And yeah. you can learn lots of things from it. But I learned lots of things from reading, like, iRobot by Isaac Asimov. Oh, Or okay. by reading yeah. the Discworld series. You know, because the, every good story deals with human nature and the quirks and the foibles and all that fun stuff. And I think the Bible is, is no more or no less than a story. You know, and they even tell you, you know, right, flat out, the greatest story ever told. It's <laughs> a story. <laughs> it was written by people. Then where did this insane idea about it being the holy word of the Lord come into play to make it work so well? Well, because back then, sheets were the fashion. Everybody wore them. Oh, they and still so wear sheets. And so it wasn't sheets. unusual to have someone in a sheet going, God has spoken to me. But Nowadays, it's unusual to see that. But You show me a religious leader that doesn't wear a fucking sheet, and I'll puke all over myself. They all do that okay. shit. You ever see the Catholics in their silky robes and their damn... It looks more satanic than a satanic ritual. But. Have have you seen the ones with the great big crystal cathedral type people? You know, I, with the you know, fancy suit. Yeah, pictures. God has spoken to me. You yeah. must repent, sinner. <laughs> ye, ye, ye sinner. But I like to sin. Sinning is fun. Anyway, today's show is going to be called "Let's Call It Acid," so they won't try it. Oh, hey, there you go. See. See, so I was I was on the right track oh, then, wasn't I? Well, me and you are in tune mentally in ways that frighten even me, dear. Let me tell you, because the last thing I expect anybody to do in this life is agree with me. And when you agree with me, I start to wonder, hey, am I getting fucked here? <laughs> you start questioning yourself. No, you? I start questioning like... the sanity of the person that's agreeing with me. <laughs> oh, well, you know, you can question my sanity all you want, because... I, you know, compared to the rest of the world, I, I'm definitely insane because I sure really? as hell I don't fit into the rest of the world. Oh, let me clue you about something that the rest of you are missing. The world doesn't fit in the rest of the world. It's all a big story. It's all bullshit. Everybody doesn't get along with everybody. They just tell you they want to, so you'll give them taxes so you can pay for the roads. So, tonight. I have a couple of topics on my mind. I don't know where to start. You want to start wherever I go random, or do you want to pick one out of my choices? Hey, you just you just whip it out. I think we should discuss reduced awareness on the Dork Table podcast on this, the 18th of January, 2020. And what is your first thing that come to your mind when I said those magic words, reduced awareness? Reduced awareness. It mm-hmm. almost sounds like a diet plan. <laughs> oh, Do you want to reduce your awareness? 
I'm a pitchman. Oh, man. For just nineteen ninety five, you, too, can reduce your awareness down mm. to the absolute lowest level. Yeah. And you can lose as much as 10% yeah. of your awareness in one day. Yeah. Just Act watch now CNN. and we'll send you a free week's <laughs> supply of all the drugs you can ingest without killing yourself. <laughs> and, anyway. But wait, there's more. Well, because... Yeah. Well, you know, the reason you sign up now, but the reason this particular concept kind of struck me this tonight was uh, I was listening to old Huxley links yesterday and the link that I wandered upon, I should get a copy of it and post it in the notes. I probably will before the show's over. But the one of the topics, it was only an hour. link. One of the topics in this podcast is is about. In the 1950s, they were doing uh, research on, what was it, uh, the, uh, the drugs that go to your head. But the one in particular, I always forget what it's called. It was, uh, it's a desert drug. Hmm. Oh, it says... Not well, peyote. No Uh-oh. Did I go crazy on you Did guys? anybody else lose the feed? Uh-oh. No. You know, it's because I was poking fun at the Bible. I don't know. I don't really care. Let me open up my link and... Says on air, broadcasting live on all streams. It might be a glitch or something. Let's just keep rolling. Oh, then he said, "Never mind." Yeah, see, I'm I'm not worried about it. My meters are reading good. Baby. Sweet. Anyway, but uh, see, now I've lost the uh, the drug that I was so impressed with them talking about. It'll come back to me. But the hallucinogenics that we were all terrified of in the seventies. Well, yep. these fucking medical people were experimenting with them in this in the fifties, fifty four. That this particular link to talked about, and uh, the results from hallucinogenics are they're basically kept away from us through society. Uh-huh. They don't want us to use them. They're just going to criminalize them and demonize them like they did with hemp. So. My experience with the system is whatever the fuckers are shoving down my throat, keep it the fuck away from me. And whatever they don't want me to have, where can I get some of that? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, they said I shouldn't do this. You shouldn't I think do I'll try it. Yeah. Hey, Mary, I mean, history shows us, you know, what what does the state promote that's good for you? Name one thing and I'll stop complaining for the rest of my life. You've got five seconds. TikTok. TikTok. What, what does the state <laughs> promote that's actually good for you? See, si. I mean, see, si, senorita. Si, senor. Um, mm. Oh, wow. That's uh, going to take yeah, that's longer the than point. five seconds. Name, name two things that they push down your throat that are fucking dangerous for you. Vaccines. Mm. And um, 5G. Almost made it in five seconds, too. You're pretty quick. And, That's just to the top of my head. Right, kind of and what does the state push the fuck out of? What you just mentioned, 5G yep. inoculations. Why? So, it's my astute observation over 60 fucking years that whatever these slimy bastards want me to do, I ain't doing it until they put a gun to my head. And then I'm still going to probably go, nah, fuck you, do it anyway. Shoot me. I had my kicks. The only one that'll complain is Cirque. Don't shoot him. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Wishful thinking. I'm yeah. not finished. <laughs> but, I mean, I- I'm serious. When you look at the fucking results of all our life, you know, what do you got? You know, people act today like they're so surprised there's fucking liars and thieves in fucking politics. Show me one politician in the last 200 years that wasn't full of shit. Anywhere, on any fucking platform that they stood on. Well, Nixon was a given, just Uh, looking at him. He looked like he was constipated. uh, Like that man hadn't (laughs) shit in years. Wow. I am not a crook. (laughs) That was a great speech, though. (laughs) I am not a crook. I earned every dollar I have. (laughs) And the whole time he's shaking his head no and Stepping back, which is physically saying, I'm full of shit uh, right up with my eyebrows. He was shivering his timbers something fierce because, you know, it's like, mm. 
Dude, seriously, you're going to pop a blood vessel. You keep grunting like that. Okay, in the, oh, in, the, in the 50s, I read that his peers referred to him as a slimy, greasy prick. Why does this not surprise me? Because he got into the White House. Uh, that could very well be. Yeah, that that could be why it doesn't surprise me. But, you know, so did Johnson, and Johnson was <laughs> one of the – Johnson Man, killed his way into that job. Johnson. I wondered, is that where that nickname came from? Mm. Oh, you know, you're he's Johnson? He's such a dick. Let's call him a Johnson. Mm, I don't know. We need somebody older than me to refresh your uh, question there. I can't answer that. I could only mm. make something up that might be close to the truth. But mm. how does this affect your reduced awareness? Um... I don't know, because I'm still stuck on that 50s thing and how totally <laughs> just like it just blows my mind. Because one of the first things that I saw on Twitter this morning was comments made in the year 1957. And it's a, a newspaper article, huh. you know, just little comments that people you want me to read some of them. Mm. You go right ahead. I don't have to. You got a link. I sure do. You want me to post it? I'll in the tell notes? you one thing. Mm -hmm. If things keep going the way they are, mm -hmm. it's going to be impossible to buy a week's groceries for $20. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Boy, is that the truth. Yeah. Wow. Remember the good old uh, days, huh? Oh, look. Cowboy Tech uh, has joined us. Hey, CT. Rob works. Rob works the book. Okay, the next one. Yeah. I'm afraid to send my kids to the movie anymore. Ever since they let Clark Gable get away with saying, damn, and gone with the wind, it seems <laughs> like every new movie either has hell or damn in it. Wow. You ever hear that shit in pie hole fucking Nixon speak? God, he was a nasty, swearing son of a bitch. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. He made me sound clean, that prick. Okay, going to yeah. you. Okay. Have you seen the new cars coming out next year? It won't be long before five thousand dollars will only buy a used one. Hell, you can't even buy a used one for five grand anymore. Jeez, hmm. <laughs> I mean, oh, wow. Pete, it's insane. Yeah. Oh, when I was working at the Ford Motor Company in 1978, I think a new T-Bird off the line was less than five grand. Yeah. See, and I remember. Cars, you know, being that inexpensive mm -hmm. and wow, not anymore. Not you call that inexpensive? One. Yeah, but in 1978, that was a lot of money. Well, okay. and see, that gets addressed later in this too. Oh, um, okay. How about this one? If cigarettes keep going up in price, I'm going to quit. A quarter a pack is ridiculous. <laughs> I <heard that>. Shit! <laughs> I mean. That, the taxes oh, yeah. on a pack of cigarettes is all you're more paying, than a quarter. That, that's all you're paying for now. You're not paying for products. You're paying in taxes, regulations, and uh, Tax retirement fees for the fucking government politicians that are sitting on their ass getting paid for doing fuck all for life. Yeah. So oh, you might as well keep them in, po in politics and work them for a while. Keep them there for 40 years. You're going to get paid well, anyway. It's the devil, you know. Um, pretty much. Yeah. How about this one? If yeah. they raise minimum wage to $1, mm -hmm. nobody will be able to hire outside help at the store. <laughs> and see, my first yeah. job, I yeah. started at 75 cents an hour. Yeah, yeah. In 1968, I think I, I hustled a buck an hour out of this couple because I was little and I was looking for money to go to the swimming pool. So they, they created something for me to do so I could earn the money to go to the swimming pool. <laughs> there but you go. They didn't work me very hard, you know, looking back on it. But they were very nice people, and they created something so I wouldn't have to go without. You know? Aw. Yeah, well, that my parents said, hey, you can have swim pool money, but if you want to eat, there's the kitchen. I went, I want a hamburger. Go get a job. Oh, so I did. Yeah. My father once told me, if you don't like it here, leave. So I did. I was 11 years <laughs> old. And you know what? He didn't mean it. <laughs> I know. Shock, Never would shock. tell me that part, though. He let me grow up oh. thinking he meant it. It's mean man. Anyway, where were we? Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. When I first started driving, mm -hmm. 
Who would have thought gas would someday cost 29 cents a gallon? Oh. <laughs> Guess we'd be better off leaving the car in the garage. And you know what? I do remember buying gas for 26 cents a gallon. There was yeah. a price war going on. Yeah, and the early 70s was the last time mm -hmm. that was. Well, it was when I was first learning to drive. So I was. Well, you're I'm my pickled. age. So well, I started to learn how to drive really young. So how young well, were you? I was 14. Okay, that's still 1974, five. Somewhere in that range, okay. yeah. Yeah, well, I was in L.A. when they had all those gas lines and shit, and just the end of, what was it, 73, I think, going into 74. And uh, Nixon had fucked up with the, uh, what was it called, OPEC? Mm. Uh, OPEC decided to triple the prices and fuck us all, and they did. <laughs> Gas doubled overnight. We had shortages and all this kind of shit. People were going nuts. But I was 13, and I didn't have a car yet, so I didn't really care. But yeah, I, but I well, learned. Well, and I remember that. gas shortages when I was living out in Colorado, gas and shortage. I was shit bricks. I thought you guys are freaking insane because mm. gas was like fifty some cents a gallon yeah. back here in Kansas, and out there in Colorado it was seventy two cents a gallon. And I thought, my <laughs> God, that's insane. Yeah, so did I. And I had a van. It was fifty one day, and the next day it was seventy seven or something. I was like, Hey, what the? Who do I look like? Paul McCartney? Give me a break. Yeah. Mm. How about this one? I read the other day where some scientists think it's possible to put a man on the moon by the end of the century. <laughs> they even have some fellows that they call astronauts mm -hmm. preparing for it down in Texas. Isn't that funny? They, yeah, they're still preparing for it. Yeah. Well, don't tell a lot of people who ain't ready to hear that yet. Yeah, I don't think they went. Yeah, I think just, we're I think we're on acid. And we just don't know it. Oh, hey, there you go. Well, it's a sometimes this trip is not so fun. You um, ever read the text in a chat room? Oh yeah. It makes you wonder how four people can have four different conversations at the same fucking time, doesn't it? Yeah, it is, it is kind of crazy. <laughs> I sit back and laugh uh, a lot. God, I do that a lot. Oh, as well. okay. How about this one? Did you see where some baseball player just signed a contract for $75,000 a year just to play ball? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if someday they'll be making more than the president. <laughs> a dollar a year. <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you what. What's what? funny about that is, you know, probably a lot of those ball players, when you take out all of the expenses of managers and agents and mm accountants and all this other fun shit they're probably still only making 75 grand a year uh, oh you left out hookers and drugs too well yeah that they're too. costly they're still... i'm telling you hookers and drugs are not cheap just the way it is yeah damn it <clears throat> why else would you pay a guy 40 million dollars for eight years to throw a fucking ball if he didn't have a really bad habit <laughs> Because he's got an awful lot of people clinging on to him. He's got a lot of Klingons. I was slapping the pats around with that old, you know, what was his name? Hernandez crap. Fucking football oh, players. I don't, I don't pay attention to that shit anymore. No, but it's still entertaining when you run into it. Come on, a guy played a whole season and he had three murders on him. <laughs> it was like, what? <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, see, and I didn't even, I, that doesn't even cross into my field of paying attention anymore. Yeah, and it's 10 year old shit. Still, it's like mm. fascinating that the American public is so caught up in their circus that they don't well, even they don't even have a clue that the players it's the American gladiators is what it is. Yeah, but the players are all they're all fucked up. Look at them. You don't need much more than to judge people on the internet through their text to look at a football field and see a bunch of fucking weird pansies running around and acting like a bunch of tough guys. Yeah, back in the day mm. when they used to rip your head off and shit down your neck and ah, then you'd get still, up for the next play. They was still fags in those days. No different. Fags like to fight just as much as straight guys do. I don't know. I don't think I'd want to go up against Lyle Alzado. Well, I don't know if he's... Sack. Yeah, well, still, there's guys that you would never guess that they were, you know, well, of the homosexual persuasion. 
that were bigger than trucks and doing this shit so that people wouldn't think they were queer. They were overdoing the uh, unattractive male thing to take the oh, attention off their sexuality. Yeah. What a fucking world we're in that, you know, and here we are in 2020 and all these dumbasses are running around <laughs> telling everybody the truth. You know, whatever the truth is, keep it to your fucking self. Do yourself a favor. It just comes to bite you in the ass in the end. Like us, you know, we don't like the government. Well, is the government changing because we don't like it? No. You know why? Because there's more idiots out there that like it. <laughs> We're outnumbered. <laughs> so, hmm. Well, yeah. they're at least acknowledging its existence and, and uh, assuming uh, that it has their best <laughs> interest at heart. Oh, man. And we That's all know what assuming means. So, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, did just, you know? What? What? This what? person here says, I never thought I'd see the day that all of our kitchen appliances would be electric. They're now even making electric typewriters. Yeah, and that, see, that to me, that's not that all that strange because I grew up through the transition from prehistoric to, to you know, new, new age. I did too, but you yeah. know what? Yeah. We've been, Farmer and I have been watching the first season of Columbo. Oh, yeah. Excellent. I, yeah. And, oh, man. Yeah. And I mean, they have these little portable manual typewriters in the cases that they're carrying around because people, even way back then, were typing up suicide notes you know, to, to say that <laughs> yeah. somebody suicided themselves. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever, well, as you watch the show progress, pay attention to this particular detail about Columbo. He breaks more laws than the crooks do. And it's justified yeah. in the show because uh, I, I've got one more question, ma'am. I'm a policeman here. I, I'm trying to do the right thing. That, 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 that. So in the process of doing the right thing, he fucking screws everybody's uh, civil rights. So as we're going into the 70s, this Columbo shit's all popular. And they're watching the cop on TV do what the cop in the future is going to do. They just didn't know it. Squash your rights. Walk all over you. Lie like a rug. And convict you for what he suspected, because he had a feeling, no evidence. I'm sure this man is guilty of something. I just got to figure out what it is. And that is not what police work is supposed to be. Well, actually, he didn't have a feeling. His nose sent hit something smelled <laughs> rotten. Correct me. But, oh, okay. Same thing. Um, same principle. It doesn't yeah. equate to what I have been raised to believe police work was the police were supposed to have a fucking guy they're looking for in writing with a fucking document a warrant that says we're gonna come for john smith at his address at so and so and so and so and if anything was wrong the cops had to abandon their fucking plot they couldn't just go in wipe everybody out and then hope for the best when it was over like they do now <laughs> yeah well, yeah, and if you knock on the wrong door, oops. Well, just, well, we fear for our lives. Just the other day, I'm reading about, I forget what state it is, but a woman had a boyfriend problem. The guy was a gang member or some bullshit. She wants him out, so she calls the cops. The cops meet her outside. She hands them the keys to her house and says, okay, go in and get rid of him. The cops call a SWAT team, level the fucking house. <laughs> Because they're afraid for their life. All they had to do is go knock on the door and take them. But no, mm -hmm. they tear gas the fucking place. Da, da, da. Oh. And then the woman, has, has she's responsible for the damage the police did to her place because she called and engaged them. No recourse for what they did. Yeah. Well, <sighs> it's no different than the pharmaceutical companies. They have absolutely no... That's, uh, I listened to a... Um, a uh, this gal, you know, it was kind of like at an open forum or something. Yeah. Um, I think it was one of these things where they let the public speak before they vote to, <laughs> yes, you have to have these shots. We're going to shoot you whether you like it or not kind of thing. Yeah. But she was a former Merck executive, mm -hmm. and she was telling them how things worked in the pharmaceutical industry and how the pharmaceutical industry – is trying to come up with more vaccines 
and more excuses to have vaccines because you don't have to go through the safety trials with vaccines because they have absolutely zero recourse against the pharmaceutical company. Right. And they still uh, vote for mandatory vaccines because they're like, oh, follow the party line. Yeah, you but must have your shot. Who is it voting? Are you talking about the public voting or the politicians? Because politicians, politicians do not listen to the public. They even no, tell you that. Are, they yeah. vote the way they fucking get paid to vote, and that's the end of that. Yes. Hmm. Well, I guess. There are many bloodsuckers. Then how do you avoid. Okay, I'm not home, so, you know, where, where you are home. I'm away from home. Home mm-hmm. somewhere else. And, man, if I bring stuff like this up to the local folk, they what? They're in shock. And this place is more status than America is. Okay, that place is more obviously, admittedly, mm-hmm. status. Yeah, but they're happy with it. These folks here that I encounter get something. They get a bang for their buck. They don't feel abused by their state. It's the difference, and I see it. I was talking to Karsten the other day, and I said to him, you know, yeah, when your government comes down and takes your guns, what are you going to do? You're going to fight them? He goes, fuck no, I'm going to give him a gun. Because he trusts his state. You know, that's the difference. He knows he can trust it. He's one of them. It's a different world when you belong to a small thing. When it's huge like we are, it's out of control. Oh, even yeah. even this right. is out of control, but the small pockets where people live and engage each other, they're different. You're like Scotland, you know, the same thing. The small island, it just had a a uniformity to it that was underneath the layers of bullshit. Well, that's because it was such a small place that they knew it, that if they deviated in one part, then everyone else would hear about it pretty quickly. I don't know. I think and it has. Shit would hit the fan. I think it has more to do with the uh, being of the, the the birthright you're from than anything else. That uh, some countries that I've encountered have, like Canada, didn't seem to give a shit one way or the other. Mexico, America, in the long run, nobody gave a fuck. Then I get to these smaller countries where yeah, they got a kingdom and blah blah blah, small population. And I learned that the, the people that live there their whole fucking life, they travel and they go other countries and they enjoy life. But this is home. Wherever I've been, wherever they're at, that's their home and they like it. And I never had that. I always had, well, I wonder what's over the next hill. Hmm. So in, they, a, in a sense, it's easy to see and recognize what they're talking about, but they don't feel it. Does that... Translate yeah. to you, yeah. You uh-huh. know, and you know how people are. Well, if you step in dog shit, it's probably because you are dog shit. Well, no, it's because I didn't look where I was stepping, and I was wearing shoes. So, yeah, I can wipe my shoe. You, on the other hand, will be an idiot for the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> well, yeah. mm-hmm. now if I step in dog shit, mm-hmm. I got a fifty-fifty chance of being barefoot when I do it. Uh, yeah, but you're but I prepared. Still, I look, yeah. I look where I'm going because I have two dogs, and they yeah. do leave landmines. You look, no. wait a minute, What's, your awareness must not be as fucked up as we think. Hmm, let us well, wonder. Well, you know, I, I do observe. Wow. So your reduced awareness is not reduced enough? I know. I need to sign up for the program. What program? You too can now have reduced awareness for the hmm. low, low fee of nineteen ninety five. Then the dot and the cent. Okay. It's not nineteen dollars and ninety five cents. It's one thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars. Wow. Well, I've got another weird question for you. Okay. Okay. Now, over the last say twenty years, let's go twenty years. How many smart, intelligent people in the public eye have you seen die from cancer before the age of sixty? Mm. Mm. You know why I Good ask, question. right? Right. But the reason I go with Robin Williams, for example, well, whatever he died from, it was well, not what. Okay. And I'm my argument is more about these famous people that suddenly die. They die of all these basically ridiculous things that you should be beyond if you got that kind of fucking money. 
like well, cancer. Well, sui- Robin, Robin Williams suicided himself <laughs> sure he did. on a doorknob yeah. with a scarf. Yeah, sure he did. It sounds mm. like a clue game. Mm. <laughs> no, it sounds like a prison punishment for not doing something you were told well, to do. Well, yeah. Is what it sounds to me, because I'm a dirty, rotten scoundrel from the road. Well, it and, was the same thing with David Carradine a year before, mm-hmm. or something like you know, just shortly before. So if they got away with it with David Carradine, then uh, uh, we he, need to take Robin Williams out too. He had a terrible reputation though for uh, being a kind of a promiscuous fellow, old Mister Carradine. Yeah, well, well, he may have had the reputation as a promiscuous fellow, but. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen interviews of him mm. and uh, stuff along the – and interviews of people that were close to him that, you know, he was in a very committed relationship for umpteen years before he – See, so it, I don't, it, yeah, see, as you, when you're young and you're doing all this crazy shit, when you're old, they bring it up like you're doing it today, you yeah. know? Yeah. Well, you didn't get to be that old if you're still doing that crazy shit. You've got to stop doing that crazy shit to get old. It works yeah. that way. There's no way around it. Oy, it's called cause yeah. and effect. In other words, don't mess with old people because we live through all the shit you're doing right now. Yeah, and so here we are with all these wealthy fucking millionaires, billionaires, and whatever, and they're dying of the most ignorant fucking things. Suicide, <laughs> cancer that you can cure with baking soda. And this isn't new. Grimner didn't discover some fucking new thing. There's writings that go back 80, 90 years that tell you there are cures to this cancer. They're powders. They cost nothing. That's why they come up with chemotherapy. Well, chemotherapy, they had all of this uh, mustard gas or whatever the hell it was left <laughs> over from World War One, and they had to find some way to use it. Oh, hey! Let's tell people that it's part of a regime to get them over some other sickness. I don't there know. There you go. Well, see, this is the reason I, br- I, I guess cancer is my main, uh, it's, I'm so pissed off that people are so simple that they don't pursue an answer to a question that they might have. Like, what's cancer? You know, I mean, you know, if a doctor tells me I got something, I learned the hard way, of course. I got that advantage where if a doctor came to me now and said, blah, 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 I would know better. But before this, when I was uh, in the bosom of the medical field people that were my friends and trusted them, I would have never questioned it. So hmm, getting away from where I was was the answer to living longer. I was getting killed where I was. Yeah. Well, and see, that's that's one of the things that everybody has a different trigger. And with me, my trigger was um, seeing other people, number one, and my brain started going, wait a minute here. And then they tried to put me on some kind of medication that was like, wait a minute here, I've read about this shit. And then they kept pushing and kept pushing and kept uh-huh. pushing, and it's like, and every time I went and had blood work done, which I haven't had blood work done in forever either. Don't, yeah. Don't like, waste your time. Yeah. I ain't bothering with it. Good. But when I was still do, you know, going and getting blood work done, it's like every damn time the numbers would change. And it's not my numbers that would change. My numbers stayed pretty steady. But the government numbers changed yep. so that they yep. could start pushing more pills. Yep. And it's like, nah, nah, you guys are rigging the game. Exactly. I see how... These cards are marked. Fuck you. What did it take? Yeah, but what did it take for you to see that? See, that's the thing I can't identify. I know I saw something. might have been an internet link. It's what I think it was that pushed me over that. What the fuck do these pills do? And then I started to look and went, oh, no, I'm done. Yeah, no, no, no. After, at, well, it's actually after I stopped it. Then I, then I did the research. But the, the thing that pissed me off was I went to a doctor appointment in Scotland. And they mm-hmm. said, we got to check your liver or kidneys for damage. I went, oh, from what? Oh, the birth, con- oh, birth the blood, con- blood pressure medicine. I went, uh, I got to go to the bathroom. And I left. <laughs> I never went back. Yeah, because when they start saying, we got to check for damage because of the medicine we put you on, that's when you go, excuse me? Okay, well, after that, I kind of had a panic. 
because I, what have I done? I threw the shit away. So then I went on the internet to see what I had, you know, actually accomplished and got backed up with what I found. Because I was pissed. Oh, wait, like, like, you're doing damage by taking the pills. Nobody told me that. Read the freaking insert. <laughs> yeah. See, and I first started getting a little bit of an inkling when I went to work at the dentist office. Oh. Um, just yeah. because I, I mean, I was I was a receptionist at the dentist office, and I did the billing, and and I also developed X-rays, Ooh. and um, helped with making dental molds, that kind of stuff. It yeah. really yeah. was yeah. a fun job. Yeah. She was a bitch, but yeah. it was a fun job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, perfectionist. But then when I had to, you know. I had to go in and assist a couple of times. And yeah. one of the times was someone that had a dry socket. And, oh, my God. Dry uh-huh. sockets are the are the worst thing ever. It's so freaking painful because the pain, I mean, you've got air going directly to the bone and all kind of nerves and shit. Ooh. And so, and it gets infected and it smells horrid. Mm. But what's even worse is the stuff that you do. And I don't remember what all it is now, but it's, you know, it's it's like natural things that if it tastes bad, odds are it's going to work. Uh, one of those kind of situations, this stuff smelled horrid. I don't, did not want to know what it tasted like. Hmm. But um, in any case, you know, dealing, helping with packing a dry socket and Ew. helping with cleaning that out, um, helping with... Uh, teeth that were abscessed wow and then you know you had to you had to <laughs> get abscess to start draining and then we mm. had to send them on to, on to do a root canal yada 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 mm. well i started researching this shit because yeah. i wanted yeah. to know what i was talking about while working at the <laughs> smart girl and wow. i found out that actually you know like 80 percent of all root canals are unnecessary yeah probably because the only reason they need to do a root canal is if the root is dead, if the nerve is dead. If the nerve is not dead, they don't need to do a root canal. <laughs> you you just need to work on the infection and get that cleaned up. And there are natural things, and there are even pharmaceutical things that you can do. But then I found out that, you know, because um, I had had an abscess tooth, and what had happened was – I bit down on a French fry and a tooth cracked. No way. Wow. Yeah, it was the weirdest damn it. thing. Yeah. And it wound up abscessing, and they yeah. put me on antibiotics. Yeah. Well, I found out that I cannot do anything in the penicillin range. Wow. This is with me. Damn. And uh, so I was reading up on this shit yeah. and yeah. come to find out. Well, they're antibacterials, antibiotic, antibacterials. Your gut mm-hmm. is full of bacteria and antibiotics. The reason they don't want you on them longer than like two weeks at a time is because it will totally destroy your gut biome. So I started learning all this stuff years and years ago. And then, you know, it wasn't until grandkids and and seeing some of the stuff that my grandbabies were having to go through and and that's when I really started connecting dots on what the hell these people are medieval yeah it's beyond that I I can't even explain what I think of this mess that we're in well see and I put them at mid-level evil just because this is what they were taught yeah. and they yeah. really believe it yeah so well, they, Rockefeller they owns. They know not what they do. Be, is, Rockefeller owns all the schools that teach medicine, so yeah. they're only allowed to teach three kinds of medicine. Period, and anything yeah. outside of those three realms is illegal. And the things that are illegal are natural remedy, <laughs> homeopathic, yeah. anything that has an uh, an opportunity to succeed. They can't do it. Yeah, if it cuts out their repeat customers, you can't have it. Well, how come they like those okay. repeat customers? And with all the the reports of damage and problems, how does this machine manage to keep people stupid enough to trust them? This is what I don't understand at all. Completely because lost on that. Because the machine, when they start injecting children before they're a day old with yeah. neurotoxins, it's, insane. it's not surprising to me at all anymore that yeah. people buy into this. 
because they're destroying their brain oh, during yeah. the most formative time. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are done wrong, like cutting the umbilical cord. That The reason you have that is not so they can snip it 20 seconds after you pop out. It's supposed to fuel you with uh, valuable stuff that your body needs from you can only get from your mother. <laughs> yeah. So they figured that shit, whatever this medical shit is, it's out to cut us down as, as uh, slowly as possible, like sleight of hand. So, oh, look over there. And while you're looking over there, they're cutting your foot off. <laughs> well, do you know that they actually, not too many of them will admit <sighs> so to it. So aggravating. Well, they, I, I don't think they know it. There's a lot of hospitals. Yeah. They don't admit to it, mm. but they actually sell like the afterbirth and mm. the placenta mm. because there's a mm. shitload of stem cells yep. in there. And why do you think the scientists want it? So that you can't have it. all this science stuff. I'm so me and Sir fight about it. Not argue, well, not fight, fight, but disagree strongly because I've got such permanently fucking scarred memories of anything connected to this fucking state. But I'm in another state. See, so I brought my pred prejudice with me along the road, and here I am where mm, it's not as bad. But uh, I'm too far gone. I don't. I'm beyond giving a fuck. I think I can't. I can't be appeased anymore. I saw too much bullshit. You know, they got me over half. I'm. You know, it's, you get to a point where you can't be taught something. And that's where I'm at with state. Instead of the other way, where I'm all state, rah rah rah, teach him to think for himself. I think for myself so fucking much that I don't trust nothing. So mm, it works against me in times. You know. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But the the one thing I can say, at least I stick to my fucking guns, whatever they are. I'm not wishy washy. I don't flip flop. I tell you something on Monday, a year later, it's the same fucking thing. See, and I'm I can't say that about myself. Whoa, that's because you try to learn stuff, you crazy woman. Yeah, I stop know. that. I you're do. gonna you're gonna end up voting. I know. I'm going to wind up hurting myself if I keep that shit up. Well, how I mean is I don't learn the standard. <laughs> the standard, it's been stuffed down everybody's throat, so this is the truth shit. You know, the world is round, uh, mm -hmm. gravity, uh, Pluto, all that shit that they tell you that you can't. What? You look up in the sky, what do you fucking see? Nothing. Bunch of shit. I can't tell you what it is. Somebody needs to tell me what it is. So I can describe it to them because I don't know what it is. It's up there in the sky. So they I see energy balls. Yeah, so they come up with all this space exploration, Star Trek, Borg. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ. They can't find water in fucking Africa. But these fucking people have the whole planet convinced there's space programs. They can't find water on a planet that's 75% fucking water. But they can find Pluto with a fucking spaceship. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm a little bit hot, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> I noticed that. Did you know I'd read something a couple months back mm -hmm. about uh, NASA saying that stars had a lot of water in them? And I'm thinking... How do they come uh, to that decision? Based on what? Oh, hey, it's like when you watch these cop films, right? They show these killers. I've got my suspicions about some of this stuff just being... Uh, a production, not all of it, but the main stuff, the the uh, the Manson and the Ted Bundy and all the things that you see in the news. Ah, how do you know they're not cover-ups for politicians? <laughs> pay some Could guy, well pay some guy off and take care of his family forever. You just got to stay in that cell and be nuts. We'll take care of everything forever. Your children will never go hungry again. How do you know? Not that that's yeah. true, but is that not possible? And then they go, you have to convict them within a shadow of a doubt. Well, what the fuck is a shadow of a doubt? I didn't know doubts had shadows. Okay, and my per my shadow? personal no. opinion is, if you can come up, this is what a lawyer is supposed to do for you. If you can come up with a, an explanation for the impossible, there you go. There's a shadow of a doubt. That's all yep. you need. Well, that doesn't work. 
because people go into shit with their minds made up already before they see the fucking evidence. You know, that's kind of like, and that's why, okay, you're going to really think I'm crazy and weird and all, mm. well, y'all already do, but that's A little okay. bit. It's okay. I had, I had seen a video, and I just can't even remember what it was now, but they were, it was something about um, producing like a, a light explosion inside a beaker of water. Mm. And it was sending elect, uh, electrical impulses into this beaker of water, and like stars would flash inside this beaker of water. And then they were talking about this, and the way my brain works, I get some of the weirdest damn connections. But while I'm watching this, I'm thinking, wait a minute here. Didn't didn't they have something about someone went on a spacewalk and damn near drowned? <laughs> and then I was thinking, what if outer space really isn't space? What if it's water? How do and you they know? Just don't want us to know that. Yeah. Well, how I do you don't know, know that. Yeah. But that's the kind of what ifs that started going through my mind. As soon as I saw that beaker of water where they put electrical energy into it and and a star lit up in, in the middle of that beaker of water. Yeah. And I went, wait a minute. And so my little mental Rolodex went to spinning and I found that one thing that I'd read about the NASA science, uh, astronaut that – just about drowned on a spacewalk, and, <laughs> Space and, then, <laughs> and then suns have water on them, and then I'm going, wait a minute here, maybe outer space is water, and maybe they don't want us to know that, and maybe, just maybe, our atmosphere, we're floating around in a bubble in a universe ocean, you know, so that's where my brain went. Well, I'm just going off. And okay. I know it's crazy and off the wall. And no, it isn't. How is it any? My word, someone will try and prove it. <laughs> how is it? How is it any more crazy than the shit they fucking feed us? Theories and maybes and possibilities and Einstein, and they bury Tesla and they give you freaking Edison. Give me a break! All the fucking losers in fucking life are all in the front. Trump. Trump is the bankruptcy fucking king on the planet. He is probably the dirtiest fucking thief that we've ever seen. And he's running America. And getting praise for it, too, from some idiots. I don't get why. But here we are. Uh, what can you do? I'll pray for a collapse and then what? Because this thing can't go on. You can't promise people the moon forever and get away with not giving it to them. Someday. Someday there's going to be a kid that's going to go, uh, more, sir. It's going to start it off. Oh, I think Virginia might pull it off this year. Because I've been rooting for a freaking uh, collapse in the States for two solid years. 18 came, I thought, oh, this is it. 19 came, but this was it. Nothing happened. Well, Trump happened, but <laughs> anyway, that was a joke. I'm but I'm not so sure they're going to let things collapse. They have not just. And they have I to. I don't know that they're going to allow that. Well, How, and I don't know that they actually have control over it. I think this monster yeah. has got out of their control. How? I mean, they oh. still have a, a have these taxes that they collect, and they pay this freaking Rothschild's fucking bank debt with the money they collect, and all these other things that go on are done on promises to pay. The only thing that gets paid is Rothschild. And it's their money anyway, so they don't – it's a scam. Or be, I, I can't even explain it's, it to it's people. Just, it's just pieces of paper that everybody is swapping around. It's a whole buttload of IOUs with pretty ink on it. I saw, so pretty I, ink. I saw Trump getting praised for the trade deal he made with fucking China. China yeah. poisons everything they fucking sell you, and now you're going to do more business with this fuck. Wow. Yeah, I wow. Trump sells rice to China. Oh, uh, no, no, Big no. World. Trump don't sell rice to China. America doesn't, no. America doesn't have any rice business, do they, sir? I don't think so. If they do, they own it somewhere else, but they don't own it on American soil. Well, they grow rice in the United States. They don't sell it to anybody in the United States. I have no idea. No, because you make more money selling it across mm -hmm. the line. Outside of the country, whatever, that's that's just the way it works. The thieves are all slapping each other back because this fucking rigged stock market is producing profits that – where do the profits come from? 
Where can you possibly make profits when your currency is representing fucking debt? We're being screwed one more fucking time. But the people don't know their ass from their elbow. Collected. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and I'm one of them. They're screwed because they don't realize that those are debt notes. Mm-hmm. They think it's money. Yeah. And yeah. that's the biggest scam. That's like that thing I read the other day. Uh. It's the biggest scam on earth but it Here, goes we'll on and on and person on. but if uh. you do this we'll give you this shiny <laughs> little coin <laughs> now the government so probably... instead of having real people with a whip mm. whipping on your ass because mm. you ain't working yeah. now you're whipping yourself because you want that shiny little coin we're a bunch of little Ooh, it's so shiny that's yeah, what we well, are our... Or maybe not. Maybe it's just complacency from being uh, conditioned, you know. I was conditioned to be how I am by other people when I was young. They explained things to me, and I latched onto that mentality, and I've been there ever since. And ever since, society has shown me a lot. They, I could get short hair and a suit, and there's still people that just know I'm playing a game. They know I'm not really there. You know what I mean? So, because hmm. <sighs> I don't have that kill, that killer instinct to take somebody for every nickel you can get from them. I don't have, I don't possess that. I once did. I, I don't any further. So, hmm. you know, you got to give up something in life to get what you want. It's not all take. It's a balance act. And some people are fortunate. They're handed shit on a plate and they just live. And everybody else bitches, but it's not their fault they were born into that family. It's just the way it went. You know, it's like, uh, what was it? Oh, I saw something on Twitter um, about biggest pedophile was murdered hmm. from like the Daily Mail or one of those UK oh, yeah, okay. uh, yeah. newspapers. Yeah. But some, some nasty-ass pedophile was murdered. He was... Choked with a guitar string, and then condoms shoved down his throat. And I was talking with the farmer about it, and I said, I'm I'm of two minds on this. Part of me is thinking, sick bastard, someone needed to take him out. And the other part of me is going, how many of these people that are currently pedophiles were abused when they were little? And I'm thinking between 80 and 90 percent are just perpetuating what was done to them. Yeah. Because they don't know any different. Yeah. And then that other 10 to 20% are just vile psychopaths that truly enjoy creating more broken people. Ah, and I got this underlying feeling that on all these murder rates and all these things, some of them are real and some of them are not. A lot of this seems to me to be like a movie. It's too, too perfect to be real. You know, life is, my physical life, my physical memories are not perfect. Everything didn't flow in order and, and they, but yet Ed Kemper, a six foot nine gorilla murders 10 women and he has to go turn himself in because the cops couldn't figure out who was doing it. Okay. Because they don't hire cops. Okay. Right, right. But let me finish this. Wait. To actually police or investigate. There's more to this. Hold on. Hold that thought. And the okay. reason the reason that I think this shit, over how many years have we heard, well, the rich do ritual killings. The you know, it, girls disappeared in this area, college, university, blah, 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 blah. So they get this Kemper guy who apparently killed his mother and did horrible things for her body, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden he's killed 10 others. So... I'm thinking, well, what the fuck is the difference if you if you got one, why not claim ten? What difference? You're going to do life anyway for the one you did. Claim ten more. Clean them up. Get them off the cops' records to be bothered with so they can close well, the case. Yeah. And then the reality of it, it was one of these fucking Kennedy relatives like Skakel that killed that girl and took them 30 years to fucking prove it in court. 30 years. Why? If he did it, they should have been able to do prove it when he did it. Why did it take 30 years? Lawyers, Admiralty Court. It took 30 years to get him to a, a SCOTUS to prove it. That's what I think. 
Because in admiralty court, you can buy and sell a judge. Oh, yeah. But you go to SCOTUS, things are up, they're more in the open. Everybody's watching everybody. So if you're going to influence that court, you better be damn good about it because you're going to get caught. <laughs> so the wackos in SCOTUS are really ruling. But the people in the admiralty court, I think, are bought and paid for. Yeah, but who fills SCOTUS? People from the admiralty court. Well, not necessarily. Because they're appointed. I don't know. They're appointed. They could be. Uh, you can have a law license and not practice, too. And there's lots of uh, loop. There's so, see, this government is so fucking huge, right? I remember when Bill Clinton came to the public eye in the 90s. My first idea was, Bill who? Who the fuck is that? The governor of Arkansas. Well, where's Arkansas? <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. Vinny. I'm joking, Vinny. It's just, I still remember that mentality of not knowing, and then, you know, they, they pummel you with Clinton, 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 and in two days, you know who Clinton is. And you know what was funny about that whole Clinton thing? Gary Hart got pretty much chased out of the presidential race because of doing what Bill Clinton was doing. <laughs> he had a girl sitting on his lap, and, and they caught a, got a picture of some girl that wasn't his wife sitting on his lap on a boat. And he pretty much got chased out of the presidential race. <laughs> wow. But they Clinton, pick and choose. Well, look at Trump. Trump's got well, three open bankruptcies, and he, but they're not personal. They're business bankrupt. Hey, he's sitting in the White House. You tell me that guy was elected, and show me how was he elected and by who. The people that there's not enough Republicans to vote for a president. <laughs> They're outnumbered by the Democrats. It's that fucking simple. Well, and most of the Democrats are dead anyway. That's why I really – I don't fear death. I'm not afraid <laughs> of dying. I'm not putting my number up there to be first in line. I don't fear it. You know, when my meat suit gives out, it gives out. Yeah. But I'm – it it really does kind of bother me that I know as soon as my meat suit expires, I'm going to be registered Democrat. I know that. I know it's going to happen. <laughs> what difference does it make anyway? Really? It's it's the different players in the game. You know, Is it's it? like no. we, were, no. we were talking last night when we were watching Columbo yeah. and the different bad guys. And he really looks like a bad guy. And that's, you know, I got to thinking about it afterwards, and it's like, wow. It really all is just a popularity contest on who doesn't look as much like a bad guy as the other one. Because hmm. Shrillery, let's face it, hmm. Shrillery really does look like an evil beast hmm. from hell. Hmm. You know? Hmm. Trumples. He's a orange man bad. No, he's a washed up game show host. He was lousy when he was doing well, that. Well, he's uh, reality TV host. And same that's shit. all it is. It's yeah. reality TV shit. San Fran Nan, oh my God. Someone really needs to retire her. You know, even Gene Rayburn retired after a while, <laughs> San Fran Nan. Come on, give it up. Well, how do these people stay in power is what I don't understand. Who actually votes for them? I don't know That's anybody like that will know. claim to fucking have voted for any of the people that sit in power, except Hansel. And there's no proof Hansel is Hansel. He could be anybody pretending to have voted for him. We don't know. Could be a story. I'm just saying. But uh, nobody else claims Trump. And there, uh, I, that's one out of 40 plus bot, you know, bots and bodies. Huh, it makes me wonder, where's all the support for all this bullshit? You know, if it wasn't for dead people voting, voter turnout would be would have bottomed out completely. But we've got an awful <laughs> lot of people that their meat suits have expired, and so they're voting now. I don't because now I they don't, don't care. <laughs> How do you prove it? You don't need ID in America to vote for a presidential election. So how do they keep track of who votes? Good question. See, the whole thing is just from the minute you start talking and to the minute they tell you to trust me, hold my beer, you know they're full of shit. Except if you trust the system. I don't get it. I'm lost. I must be a broken record because I'm too dumb to figure this one out. But, Do we need to bop you upside the head? Hey, you know what? We should play a nice game of guess what state I live in. 
<laughs> well, the reason that came to mind the other day was you can pretty much tell what country people are from. And But I grew up in America where all the countries were represented by states. Like Louisiana uh-huh. was French, you know, like Canada, French Quebec. Uh, New York was this, Jews, Spigs, and this and that. Well, you could pretty much tell the state somebody was from by their accent. But Mm -hmm. things got so mishmashed over the years, somebody from the East is now living in the West. But they still talk, you know, they talk like they was uh, from where they're from. And they don't, their voice don't change, like Stal Long. That guy did 60 fucking movies, and he doesn't speak any better English than fucking Schwarzenegger does. Yeah. Uh, I got a visit, I got a visit, twice. And people go, okay, sly. But to me, that's that's how inaudible the fucker is. It's like listening to, what's his name? The Terminator. I'd be back. They gave him yeah. short lines so he couldn't fuck him up because he can't speak. Oh, and then they made him governor of California to punish him. For Marion Maria Shriver. Oh, but he She's got not them a pretty girl either. Oh, beside that. But he got them back by running as a Republican. <laughs> yeah, it's all a game. And then he knocked up his maid. <laughs> what a piece of shit. <laughs> man, and I just I I see stuff like that and I go, Man, some people will just do anyone. Mm. But <clears throat> I digress. Well, you don't like the Schwarzenegger? What? Are you crazy? No. Mm-hmm. No. Hmm. My well, mother refers uh, to him as the ugly man. Wow. My mom called Humphrey Bogart that. It's funny. But, uh, yeah, it's weird how uh, society presents us with one thing, right? And people look on to that thing, and they all nod their head because they don't want to be the weirdo. And today, I bring this thing to you, and instead of nodding your head, you shake, no, I'll just be the fucking weirdo, and you can kiss my ass. Because people are conditioned to believe This is what we're telling you it is. No matter what you think, your thoughts don't. No, 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 no. Listen to us. (laughs) Rob says, I live in a state of confusion. Uh, Only when I talk. Oh, only when you talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, imagination. That makes me think of SpongeBob doing the whole thing (laughs) in the rainbow. No, I had different ideas when you said SpongeBob, but that's okay. Here, SpongeBob SquarePants. If my sponge started singing while I was cleaning the table, I'd be a little freaked out. That would be a little bit weird, especially if your if your sponge had pants. Boy, that that one went to shit real quick, didn't it? Anyway, so I'm on this thing about guess what state I'm in because there's no way to tell anymore. Where somebody is from, unless they tell you where we're where we we are from, where I am is a different story. You just know. <laughs> I can tell the foreigners by looking at them here now, because I've been here so long. I'm starting to recognize people. <laughs> oh, I see how you are. Yeah. You got the foreigner radar going. Well, I like to sit off by myself and observe, watch things, take notes, mental notes. And yeah, I recognize people and go, oh, I've seen you before. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. But what I came up with the perfect reason for finally for not learning how to speak Danish. And that is, if I'm in a bar, after two beers, do you think I'm going to understand two words of Danish? <laughs> Let alone be able to speak them. <laughs> I can barely handle English after two beers. Hold this. Hold this a minute. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, Whoa. Frumpy's putting up pictures about moose and her boys. Yep. Well, it was, yeah. I've seen that much snow before mm. in my day. Yeah, I haven't. It's been a while. No, I'll pass. I avoid that. And you know what Cirque says? Oh, it's snowing. And you know how much snow they get here? Do what? Do you know how much snow 
this area of Denmark gets <laughs> How much? enough to stick for maybe half a day or a day, maybe even three days, but that's about it. Somewhere between oh, really? one and three. Yeah. Over five years, I've seen just a few days at a time of snow. Hardly anything. It's just wonderful. And Cirque likes the snow. She's one of those people who like, I mean, not so much. I like warm. I like dry. I married a woman that likes cold and wet. It's kind of strange. <laughs> Opposites attract. Yeah, I know. I know. But it, see, taking her to the desert would be uh, the reverse. And I don't think people can handle the desert as well they can handle the cold. This level of cold isn't brutal. The middle cold is pretty good. But a desert is extreme like a, geez, like Canada would be in the wintertime. Whew. Whew. No, thank you. As in Montreal in October, I spent an October there once. No, thank you. Hmm. I was get me back to Miami. I gotta go. It's too fucking cold. I can't take it. Well, yeah, you're from L.A. though. So, yeah, well, I was you know. living in Florida at the time. But oh, it's a long story. But to make it short and to keep all the trouble out of it, when uh in in the nineties. Me and a buddy of mine helped this woman get to Canada. <laughs> she needed to get out of her marriage and needed some help, so we helped her. Hmm. And it was like one of those damn Mission Impossible fucking movies, and we're all looking all over our shoulders, going to the airport. Oh, man, it was insane. You know, we get on the plane, and ah. Oh. But, man, getting to the airport was like, well, if he finds out you left, and he comes, oh, boy, we're going to have to... It was weird, but nothing happened. It was just getting her out of there was a, an issue at the time. Well, yeah. Well, you know, you might find this hard to believe, but some people do terrible things to their partners and try to use their children to leverage on each other. So, ooh. Yeah. Well, ooh. Go I've, figure. I've, yeah. So, I sided with the poor side instead of the the wealthy side and helped her escape. <laughs> so, I mean, who wants to leave a family with money if they don't have a fucking good reason? She was escaping for a reason. I didn't even want, you know, radio time ain't going to go anywhere with it. But even at the time, I didn't want to know details. So it was like, wow, this has got to be bad. Because you don't run away from fucking money. You run to it. So, mm -hmm. somebody that wants to leave Miami... Yeah, living the good life in Miami to go to Montreal to live somewhere smaller where it's cold. It's just seemed too strange. So we got involved and helped her do it. Because I had, you know, friends that were crazy like me. And we did weird stuff. We called it helping each other. You know? Well, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. So. Oh, man, if yeah. that ain't the truth. Because yeah. yeah. uh, I was at the bar tonight. Uh, there's two little bars, and I go, and I like to sit by myself and just watch the people be Danish. But I know a few of the guys. And the bartender and me don't speak because she doesn't speak English, and I will not, never learn her language, so we don't talk. But I know everybody she knows that's older, that's my age. So whenever she, I, she sees me run into somebody that she knows, she's always surprised to see that I know them. <laughs> Her boss comes and sits with me at the bar sometimes, and it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. Uh, hmm. But like, what you were saying, it, it's these people seek me because they want to practice their English. And it just shocks other people that don't because they see the differences and not the similarities. Just like I'm doing right now, only it's them. Yeah. Because I, deep down inside, I mean, beyond all this communication crap, this is, if there's anything that will fuck your life up, it's talking. Talking is our enemy. And if you don't believe that, add a little alcohol and then start talking. And you will find yourself very, very alone. <laughs> because, you know, people don't really want to know the truth. That's what I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then even when you agree with some people, talking to them still, 
It's that underlying friction because you disagree about details that don't fucking matter. But the reason that we're taught these things is so that we'll always be on edge against each other. <laughs> I can't prove it. I've just got a theory. I'm calling it the theory of flesh too. Oh, that's right. If you want to have well, a problem with another human being, speak to them, and you will have your problem. Actually, it's 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 more along the lines of speak to them on the internet. <laughs> no, 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 no. I because man, I'm, oh no. man, oh man. Yeah. Oh, that's just part of it. Because face to face, you know, yeah. you don't have near as problems as many problems face to face because people. They don't realize it a lot of times. Get the whole body language thing, and and there's a few other things, and so, so you don't have near as many problems as you do on the internet, where there is no body language, there no, there is no um, inflection in the voice or any of that no, other fun shit. No, reading dog Latin is an excellent freaking way to communicate with your fellow humans. See, that's the other thing that I've learned. In my own way, I can't describe it to anybody else. But some part of me knows that when I'm speaking, my thoughts are clear as fucking bell to me. But when I try to explain them to somebody else, it loses in the translation because I'm talking. We we live in a show-me world, but we run on words. And the words have all been fucked over to trick us into believing shit that is farthest from the truth as you can get. See, I, hmm? that's I I kind of understand that because okay, there's lots yeah. of times where when I say something, it's like, wow, that sounded a whole lot better in my head. Yeah, before I exactly. actually said it. Exactly. <laughs> I know. I know what you mean. But the the concept is just great. Then you speak, and that's where that dog Latin thing. When you started doing the the research with words, I got I went to little bit crazier with it got in the, the root of the language and found out about dog latin and how it was you know it's english how english became english and who it was for and here we are we think we're so fucking brilliant in the 21st fucking century and we're speaking in dog latin like a bunch of mutts and we don't even have a consciousness about that problem so it doesn't exist because nobody knows it's there See, it's like yeah. oxygen. You have to be told air is invisible, or how would you know air is invisible? Somebody has to tell you this. So, just like anything else, I think that ideas have to be explained to you before you can actually apply them. And we get the worst advice from the worst losers on earth to do things in life. Vote, fiat currency, I mean, do what need I say more, Rockefeller medicine. Admiralty Court. Huh? Yeah, huh? straw man. Hmm. Hey, celebrity. What would happen to you if you killed your straw man? Is that I actually double indemnity? You can't be tried for double murder. Because if you're dead at seven, what happens if you don't do any banking for seven years? You know, are you uh, erased from the system and called dead? What becomes of you? If you're not plugged into this fucking machine and you got your little card with your number on it, who are you? Uh, Neo from The Matrix. Did you know that on your I've got I had to look at this to be absolutely positive. On the Social Security card, it says this is no form of identification. Well, then what is it? Why? It's a catalog number, so they know where you you know what to do with you. Yeah. Social Security, same thing. You know, or that's the point is part of the number represents your state and the other numbers represent your straw man. You're not in there anywhere. It tells you right there this is not ID. Then what is it? And why do you and need yet, it? When so you go somewhere, you know, to do like the legal paperwork and stuff, they ask to see it. That, so that card can confirm that you are who you are and have, who you say you are. Have you ever taken a look at your social security card? It looks like something somebody pulled out of a freaking joke book. Uh huh. Yeah, it's it's like a prize you get inside of the Cracker Jacks box. It's not laminated. It's paper thin. It, 
and you're not supposed to laminate it. Right, right. But see, what is the magic of this one little fucking business card size document? It opens yeah. all the doors to everything else. That's your, that's your slave number. Oh. I don't want to be a slave, Miss Mary. Oh, don't make me be a slave. So now that I'm a slave, mm-hmm. you know, some people think that. Of. <laughs> you know, I've got this theory that if your net worth is less than, say, I don't know, $500 million, you're one of us. Yeah. All right. And people think that if you got a million dollars that you got a big house and all you're in debt up to your eyeballs forever. You'll never, never come out of it. Ever, ever, ever. So what is the appeal to all that? I I don't get it. See that's a that's a thing that's as I started snooping into because, like I said, I have one of those weird minds that I have a tendency to squirrel and find some another connection that people would go, how the hell did you get there from here? But, mm. you know, like Bill Gates, mm. he's supposed to be one of the richest men on the planet. But actual, tangible, property-wise, actual, tangible, mm. valuable asset yeah. that if he had to pay for a meal, mm-hmm. that kind of actual, tangible asset. Mobile assets. He's no richer than anyone else. And if something were to happen in the stock market to where Microsoft would tank, Mm -hmm. he'd be in a po house. Because that's the only place he's got any kind. So it's all just digits on a freaking screen. But it holds value. All of it. And yet everybody goes, but Bill Gates is so rich. (laughs) He's so smart. No, (laughs) Bill Gates is a freaking shyster. He's a front man for a really bad band. Well, I just no uh, different than anybody else. This Bezos guy, whatever this fucking Amazon crap thing is. Yeah. Oh man. Elon Musk. Oh, there's another fucking winner. Elon Musk. See, he is, he, any, I had no freaking clue who that guy was, and then I kept seeing stuff, and so I started researching on him, and I thought, what a dude. <laughs> but anybody, a, anybody that the state is going to support and push in your face is bad for you. If you haven't learned that lesson by now. Then you're never gonna. It's just that simple. So the discipline to to not fuel these beasts, it's useless because there's too many people that will because they don't want to pay this. They want to get a deal. So they go to the and they go to the Jew every fucking time. <laughs> and you know, the end is the end. It's still shit doesn't go anywhere. Whatever we have is Second right, second best. But we live in freedom. Oh, look at us. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, freedom. So you say. I don't know. When I was free years ago, uh, I didn't care about anything. That's how you define freedom. No, no ties, no worries, nowhere to be, nowhere to go. Nothing you have to do. It's just yours. Do whatever you feel like doing. And that's freedom. But I think that uh, my nature and freedom collided. And I had to, you know, I came to maybe a realization that I'm not cut out for the uh, bachelor life. I I like to have a partner. And not only do I like a partner, but I like the opposite sex as a partner. Unlike some of these other fellows, you know, that go their own way and shit. But, you know, there's a price to pay for everything that you like. Be willing to pay it or fucking walk away. There, there's your answer right there. Yeah. Not everything costs you money. Some things cost you things that are so much more valuable than fucking money. <laughs> like time. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. gray hair. Uh, patience. Energy. Yeah. Patience. Mm-hmm. You know, you show your virtue in the weirdest ways by not killing your partner when they say things like, I don't think the world's round. Because Cirque has yet to get violent with me over it. And I don't know if anybody can really prove that I mean it or not. I say it. Do I mean it? Hmm. I don't know. But it's interesting that it's so many heads turn when all you do is 
doubt the status fucking story. Whatever the status is. Oh, we went to the moon. Yeah, that's what happened. We got space exploration. Yeah, that's what happened. So I just nod. You know, when I'm in public settings, I avoid this shit like the plague. You know, because you can't win. Society is right and you are wrong. There you go. It don't matter mm-hmm. where you are. There's a lunatic in every fucking bar that's just an expert on space travel. Just ask them. They know all about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, uh, that's like that David Icke uh, video I was listening to earlier. And, you know, it's if you repeat it often enough, yeah, they say no. Yeah. That's how the human mind works. Yep. You repeat it often enough, especially if people are in a in a little bit of a unsettled or traumatized state. It will stick better if they're in an unsettled or a traumatized state. So repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, and then repeat it some more. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yeah. it's like magic. It's true, I tell you. Then you, you seem to be proving my theory about communicating. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, like the chat right now, the, uh, uh-huh. the Germans are doing ex- – did – in the past, exactly what America's doing right now, almost step for step. They're just doing it in English, so it looks different. Mm-hmm. And they got the Jews in the background this time. They don't have them in the front being big victims of nothing. Oh, fuck no. While America supports these fucking people, you know, with their fiat currency schemes. And this is what I mean. This thing has got, how many more lives are they going to come up with to give the banks another couple trillion dollars to operate? It's ridiculous. We're, we're, how can anybody believe this at this point? See, and I just look at it and say, how many more trees are you going to kill? <laughs> Not me. Ooh, you know, I got flowers growing in my freaking windowsill in January. Think about that. Big pink mm-hmm. fucking faggy flowers to my uh, my mother-in-law. Didn't, didn't Margaret bring those? Oh, you, oh Cirque got, got me big pink flowers. Baggy flowers to display in the front window of the house, and I grew them. Yay. You damn right. I don't get flowers are supposed to be pink and sissy for fuck's sake. <laughs> but it's the time of year where you would, I didn't expect anything to survive. I thought it would just you know kind of die off and come back in the spring. And I got window sills full of fucking green plants. It's amazing. I'm just blown away. I feel like the jolly green giant of Denmark. <laughs> ho, I know. Ho, ho. You have a do you have a green thumb? I don't know. It's amazing though that you know, I come from this uh killer kind of thing in America to now I'm growing plants. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I used to drink with some hardcore people that were rough and tough and protect me because I'm little. And then it's like, wow, man. And now I'm I'm in this peaceful, quiet place. I haven't seen the police in so many years. I forgot what they do. Hmm. You know what? What? I'm kind of sort of I kind of sort of ignored you. Yeah, yeah. Not I really know. ignoring What'd you, you find? but cuz my brain went hmm. What'd you So hear? you have a green thumb and then I wanted to yeah. know where did that phrase green thumb come from? Probably and from taking a a, a brown yellowish looking plant and bringing it back to life with a little attention. Okay. Cuz you know well, plants I'm going to go to plants respond to light your voice and mm-hmm. water. Water, sunshine and a human voice and they thrive. It's fucking amazing. Hmm. Well, I mean Okay. Yeah, cuz one like well, when this I what, when, on answers.com Okay. It says the saying green thumb means someone who not literally has a green thumb because they like gardening. And when growing tobacco, farmers remove the flowers from the crops in order to increase the size and weight of the leaves. And this process, known as topping, is standard practice even today. Now, in early colonial America, when tobacco was a major cash crop, farmers would handpick the flowers using thumbnails to cut the stem. And after a while, the farmer's thumb would be stained green, hence the term green thumb. <laughs> now, that was given from a wiki user. I like my answer better. Well, I don't, because there was a, 
uh, where is that? Okay. From WalterReeves.com. Let's Reeves? check out his. Because that's a, that's a top one. Okay. Um, let's see. According to James Underwood Crockett, it comes from the fact that algae growing on the outside of earthenware pots will stain a person's thumbs oh, yeah. and fingers if he or she handles enough pots. Hence, a person who is always working with flower pots has a green thumb. And then there's another theory that it originated during the reign of King Edward I of England. And he was fond of green peas and kept half a dozen serfs shelling them during the season. And the serf who had the greenest thumb won a prize. <laughs> greenest. <coughs> so, yeah. huh, there you go. See, that's that's what my brain does all the time, and it's scary. <laughs> well, I'm not afraid. I'm so old. What can they do to me now? They haven't already done it. Fuck. It's like, nah. You know, you grow yeah. beyond your fear in life, or you succumb to it. And whatever the hell I've ever been afraid of, whatever the, it was, because I'm sure it's been something, but not entities that I can't identify. It was more like, hey, that guy's got a gun, and he's going to shoot you. That would scare me. The cops being there, that, nah. But now, from what I've seen over the last eight years on the Internet, I sure hate to be pulled over in America by a cop. Ooh wee. Here it wouldn't I wouldn't be worried about it here. Well you walk everywhere. What are they gonna do? Mm. Walk if, up to you like a okay. Monty Python skit. And, wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo, and, to the side, sir. And even though if I was in the vehicle and they pull the car over to driver to do the driver doesn't yeah. give them – they're not like Americans. They don't do everybody in the car just because they pulled the driver over. you got to have a reason. It's different here. So, oh, yeah. yeah, even walking. Say – I don't know. Well, I'm so one of a kind looking. Me fitting a description is never going to happen because nobody looks like me. Yeah. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, my size is unique. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. So, for the – you know, for me to be uh, harassed by the man here, I'd have to physically be doing something to somebody. Just, you know, you're you look like doesn't do it. It, it wouldn't stand up here. People would go, "Hey, what the fuck?" Because yeah. they don't want they don't want the guests treated any differently than the people that live here. Unless you're doing something, leave them alone. And we all get along. Oh man, I got a. a buddy down at the store that I'd never asked his name. The two guys are from Iran. And I had to tell David today, you know, uh, your co-worker told my wife to say hi to me, and I never asked him his name in all this time. So, you know, that's just how comfortable living here is. No names. Hey, how you doing? Just like normal. Maybe that didn't make sense. Hmm. No, it does make sense. And I've actually, yeah, you know, okay. been in that un <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. Okay, uncomfortable yeah. position where where you I can't remember a person's name. And then I get called out on it. You don't remember <laughs> my name, do you? And it's like No. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> excuse oh, no. me, I interact with hundreds of people on a daily basis. <laughs> but don't you know who I am? <laughs> No, actually, I barely know who I am most days. So, really? Seriously? Well, yeah, but see, you've got the same kind of thing going for you I do. It's you've got purple hair. So, people kind of remember, you know, hey, that woman's got purple hair, you know. But you, as the woman with the purple hair, you're not going to remember every Tom, Dick, and Harry that notices you have purple hair. You know, someone did that one. Uh, this has been a few years ago, but... I was on my way out to see the grandkids, and I stopped where I always stop to fuel up. It's about the halfway mark and, mm. and half tank mark. And, um, well, it's whatever. In any case, I stopped to fuel up and go on my merry way. And then on the way back, I stopped the same place to fuel up. Mm. Well, a couple days later, I ran into someone in town, and they said, were you in Lyman the other day? And I looked at them, and they said, I could have swore that was you. I saw this purple and blue hair go by. Yeah. 
because I, I my my beard is gray, but my my hair is not all gray. I got like one streak of gray, and the rest of it's still brown. So, mm-hmm. no, nah, I, I look like me. No matter what, you'd never confuse me for someone else. It wouldn't happen. Just like you just said about your hair. Same principle. Mm-hmm. But because we're so noticeable, they think they're noticeable. Noticeable back. It's like an unspoken kind of expectation. <laughs> you know, yeah. I noticed you, damn it. What about me? Where's mine? <laughs> well, and I just looked at him and said, well, shit, I didn't see you. <laughs> Ooh. <clears throat> Which I didn't. I mean, it was a big truck stop. You know, you stop, you fuel up, you get the hell on the road again. If you mm-hmm. have to pee, you tend to that business, then you get on the road again. That's pretty much what I do, at least. Well, I've got the dork table question of the week for you. Okay. All right. Let me type it in the notes before I say it to you. Uh, 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 well, you know what? Uh, uh, no. Uh. And okay. what my question to you is, what the hell does real mean? Real? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We use this word constantly. Real. Real, real reality. Real, real, real this. Realism. Realistic. Real, 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 fucking real. And then I started to, to do one of your things was wonder what the hell is the origination of the word real? What does real mean? Are we using it out of the proper context like everything else? <laughs> Where it actually means something else, but we don't know that because we were taught this definition. Hmm? 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 Hmm. I mean, not that it doesn't, but have that thought ever crossed your mind about certain words lately that you come across? Oh, I got to open the door for the cat. Ah. Yeah, I moved. There he goes. Yeah, well, he wanted out. I'm in the living room. Anyway, so, because you guys got me all started with this defining words thing. And now I'm just taking it, you know, the extra mile. And let's tackle the word... The, the best word of all I could come up with is real. Because hmm. everybody harps on, well, it's real. It's real what? What does real actually mean? Hey, maybe we'll have Okay, to do well, according to uh-huh. dictionary.com, mm-hmm. um, it's an intensifying adverb, and it means very. See? So, um, and the adjective real means true, actual, genuine. So, okay, so that's the adjective. Referring to an object, it's becoming clear. That's what I piss and moan about this English shit for is one word has four fucking definitions. How is. What? Depending on its usage, yeah. How come in, in Danish, when they say something, it means something, but when they use English, it can mean anything? Dog Latin. Well, it's like Dog Latin. Circles, circles was the one that told me um, they have f- like five different words for love in uh, Greek mm-hmm. language mm-hmm. because there's five different expressions of, you know, like whether it's platonic or you love a book or you love a person mm-hmm. or, you know, mm-hmm. different things like that. There's a different word for each one of those types of loving something and i thought you know that just absolutely makes sense to have a different word for each one of those whereas here in english we have there 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 and people are constantly using the wrong there Hmm. in the spelling or in the using because they all sound the same yeah they all sound the same but when you write them yeah um, ah. You know, they're using the different. They're using like T H E Y apostrophe R E when they should be using T H E I R. Or well, that's like, what I mean. Is they they use these tricks to deceive us to explain how intelligent you are because you understand it when it's really not the truth. It's a trap. You're using the wrong word the wrong way, and all of you don't know it. And then the few, like just like the. Uh, Federal Reserve thing. Well, if one in a million finds out, nobody will listen to him anyway. Let's do this. Yeah, because we can call him a conspiracy theorist yep. and everyone will ignore him. And they do, too. To this day, it is insane. Or a tinfoil hatter. 
And <sighs> I've gotten to the point where it's like, yes, I have a tinfoil hat for every day of the week. But, I have one to match every ensemble I should choose to wear. But aren't people concerned about the quality of life anymore? Or are they just concerned about what group you claim to be, be a part of? You know? Wow, what happened to us? Because I don't remember it like this. This Whatever this mush shit is turning into, like this Virginia crap. This governor of Virginia, just he's dying to have a fucking civil war in his hands. Oh yeah, I mean they're inviting it two 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 more days. They got a they've got a, a thing they can go to, but they got to be disarmed at the cage door and then watched over by armed men while they're in a cage. What? Oh, I got a lick sore from the queen. Oh, I'm so lucky, 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 lucky. Anyway. Well, he either drew the short straw or the low card or whatever, but it was one of those things where, guess what? You get to be the one to push this. The United and Nations. Most of, them, most of them threw their names into the hat anyway because it's like, oh, I want to play. I want to play. I want to play because <laughs> they like doing this whole, oh, I Christ. get to <laughs> flex my muscles. Well, and they're doing it. Power. They're doing it in New York too, separately in a different uh, in a oh, different attack. They're after it's the a, guns in America. And it's a multifaceted attack, just like everything else they're doing. And as far as I'm concerned, when I see this stuff, it is acts of desperation. When I see mandatory vaccines <laughs> and gun <laughs> confiscation yeah. and all of this other shit going uh, on, yeah. these are. These are they're pulling out the last straws. They're pulling out all the stops. Right. They're going, holy shit, we're losing it here, peeps. We got to do something. And so they're pulling out all the stops. Well, uh, then they're inviting thousands of armed guys to Virginia because they're telling them they can't go. So you reverse the yeah, you know, psychology shit. If, well, I hate to use that term, but it's the way people understand it. You know, just tell people they can't do something. There's going to be a line a mile long. I want my turn. <laughs> well, you're well, not allowed psych, to do that. You know, psych is mind and ology is the working <laughs> of it. So, that, yeah, they're going to have, what is that? Now I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> I was just winging it. But, Good you know, psychology, yeah. it yeah. really is. It's it's the messing with of the mind or the working of the mind. And they're yeah. learning to work it. Work it, work it, which is why I say yeah. the English language is the language of spell casting. Yeah. And my yeah. eldest brother gives me shit all the time about that and says, you know, you play in with words. That doesn't make any difference, and it just confuses things. And I said, <laughs> it may for you. No, that's the point, is if you're using a fucking language, it shouldn't be ambiguous. It should be specific. And English is the farthest fucking thing from specific. Yeah, they spew all this shit in English globally. Climate change. The fuck does climate change really fucking mean? Nothing. It's a chant for idiots to. I oh, fucking think because most of us don't can't be bothered with finding out. There's your truth Ooh. right there. Most people. Psychology don't, is study of the soul. Oh, well, that's not the way it's sold. It's sold as as the study of the mind. Uh, it derives from Greek roots, meaning study of the psyche or soul. Okay, well, or uh, breath, uh, spirit, soul. But there you go again, though. See, now we've been trained to hear the word psyche and attach a value to that that probably doesn't apply. Yeah. This is where I was ranting about when you watch Columbo and you see all the snaky, fucking shitty, damn things he does as a cop to catch the killer, you forgive him because he caught the killer. But nobody ever bothered to go, you know, he's breaking like, fuck, all your damn uh, rights. Every right you had, that cop just stepped all over him and arrested you anyway. And, yeah. But the public didn't see that. The public just saw, hey, he caught the killer, yay. Because he was an endearing schlep. Well, so what's that saying? Problem, um, solution. Something. Oh, the Hegelian dialectic. Problem, reaction, there solution. You go. Same thing. And see, it's addictive. I like Columbo too, but I saw it from where, whatever frame of mind I'm in, where I'm at, opened up new doorways. And I started to watch for, 
where the cop is lying to people to gain. And they're not supposed to do that. They claim they don't do that, but they do that. See, and, and the farmer hmm. and I sit there and we watch them and we're looking for for flubs. Oh, you know, okay. Like there, yeah. was, there was um, one of the episodes where when she was in the car and they were driving, she had one scarf on. Oh. <laughs> but as they're getting out of the car, yeah. she had a different scarf on. Yeah. You know, so we're watching these and we're being entertained <laughs> and we're going, did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> oh, they screwed up there. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's. It's a different form of entertainment for us. Than you're just, most yeah, well, you're just looking for a different flub than I am. Because I'm no, but still see, stuck we on see that stuff as well. Yeah, I'm still stuck on talking though. I can't get beyond it. I don't trust what I see because without my glasses, I can't see. So uh, I take what I see with it. Okay, but what I hear, that's another story. Yep. But I'm listening in tune with dog language. So what the fuck am I really doing? I don't know. I don't know, but we're out of time. Did you know that? Are we? Is that good? Well, no, I guess since we started a little bit late. No, we, I don't know. How do you want to do this? It's, what time is it? Oh, it's almost we 10. Can, no, that's I'll an hour. We can go I, another five I minutes because we were. I, no, I started at eight tonight. I forget because I, I changed everything. Concert, uh, was interfering with her dinner plans. My radio. Ah. Yeah, so I had to back it up. And I'm still confused about what day I do work on. But you're right. I think we're done to the end. I have a few more minutes and we'll call it a show. Yeah. But I love arguing with my pal, Miss Mary, on the dork table about everything and everybody. And, you know. It is kind of fun, isn't it? Because it's not taken to heart. I'd never take you to heart and get all, you know, upset because you don't agree with me. But let's close it with my great words. It either does or it does not. There you go. It either does or it does not. Period. Mm -hmm. End of time spoken. (laughs) Well, you know, it's, it's like Confucius say, man who says he cannot and man who says he can are both correct. So, there you go. <sighs> yeah, some things just never improve no matter what you do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, yes, but, well, try you know, as hard it, as you want to. You know? Well, and it's like, you know, some people some people really believe, believe that that they lived through something or that they did something. And the more I look into mm. this mind game crap that's been going on and implanted memories and who knows and all yeah. this other fun stuff yeah. Yeah. how do you really know anything anymore that's why i don't trust history and I, I was in high school oh my god i absolutely loved history i yeah. loved reading about the aztecs and the incas <laughs> and, and ancient european history yeah. and you know all of and ancient greece and yeah. egypt and found it all fascinating yeah. and the more i look into it and the more i dig into it the more i start going oh <laughs> wait a minute here <laughs> so yeah what is real is there really any i don't know real i don't know out there you will you want to pick this up on tuesday and we'll continue our quest at Conti- in a perfect continue world. to look for the real i don't because That'll give us both a couple of days to find a few links to entertain with, maybe. Because it's such an interesting concept when you really sit and think about it. Because what's real to me doesn't necessarily have to be real to you. I don't care if you believe it or not. What difference does it make to me whether you believe that my doorknob is God? And how are you going to prove to me that my doorknob ain't God? I just told you it was. Therefore, I am. Well, see, therefore, you're getting a handle on God, aren't you? <laughs> well, just to make the you know to make the point to continue yeah. with whatever I believe to be true in my sick fucking mind, it's true. There you go. And just because you tell me so, don't mean it is. I gotta agree with you. <laughs> and if I don't, so what? Does it change the? Does it change the information? No, the information's still the same. How you in, how you interpret it matters. 
Yes. That's the and key. And that's where a lot of things get lost in interpretation. Because. Lost in translation. Because we talk to each other, Miss Mary. It's so simple. We just need to find another way to communicate besides this useless communicating talk shit that we do. <laughs> huh. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could all just think it and people would get it? Because mm. I tell you what, that would clean up people's attitudes really fast. Mm. If you were no longer able to talk and and you just thought things and people got what you were thinking. Ooh, that could man, be dangerous oh too, though. What if you were thinking something bad? It would be bad? dangerous initially. Uh. And then <laughs> people would be going, wait a minute, you backstabbing cunt. Uh. But I digress. Like my Excuse dueling me. I concept? rarely use that word. I know. You're good at it, though. Yeah, well, can't understand normal I thinking. will give you what a C in normal cunt for your score this week, Miss Mary. Excellent. Why, You're you. an excellent cunter. <laughs> Why, nobody can cunt as good as you. <laughs> I can't understand I, normal I, I, thinking. I, I, That's what it is. Good Lord. I just plain can't. Wow. And everybody bitches about that word anyway. Normal. They should have used the word average. And then everybody else would be like, hey, I'm not average. Yeah, you are. I'm above average. You're just a dummy. <laughs> Let's go with Hansel and play the you're an idiot game. <laughs> you know, you have to have a certain percentage of people that fit into that one category hmm. in order to be either above or below average. Hmm. I don't know. I find it very... I, I don't. Very I just confusing. know I don't fit in that category. It's up to someone else to decide whether I'm above or below. Because well, as far as I'm concerned, I ain't in that bunch. I don't care what oh, I ain't in that bunch. Boy, that says I'm that. not average. Well. I have blue and purple hair. I'm not average. <laughs> no. Anyway, well, let's close it up with, you got any real cool fucking thing to say before we go away Oh. Tell you what, mm -hmm. I will say the one thing that I like to put on Twitter quite a bit. What? Real eyes, real lies, real lies. Ooh, then I did hit the right word with my question. Yes, you did. Then we will try to remember to carry this up, but because it's such a good lord, it's a it's a it's a bombshell of a concept. There's so much to it. Oh yeah. Anyway, and with that. I'm all talked out. You got any last word for these wonderful folks at RealLibertyMedia.com? Nope. Just thanks for listening in, everybody, and have an absolutely amazing rest of your weekend. And don't forget, tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, Grimner's going to be on playing the blues, and there will be a rousing Pretty. game of trivia in yeah. the chat. And directly following Grimner will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open no, up no, a no, can of no, Wait, wait, wait. No, I think Hal is taking tomorrow off for the first time oh, in is like he? forever. Yeah, Grim was saying that last night on the balls to the floor. Oh, okay. He'll no, correct Hal me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure, yeah, that's what I heard him say this morning. No whoop-ass tomorrow. Just but this one time, there will be yeah. trivia yeah, and blues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that's now, it. I'm done. Okay. See you. Love you. Bye. Bye-bye.